article from Der Spiegel, the German article. Um, okay, let's let's continue. Here we go. All right. Okay. Hans Neiman mentor Maxime Delugi here. What Magnus Carlsen did is absolutely ridiculous. Magnus Carlsen accuses accused Hans Neiman of cheating and also went after his mentor. In an interview with Der Spiegel, the latter Maxime Delugi speaks of these speaks of those accusations for the first time and discusses whether he will take legal action. Okay, here we go. Picture of Magnus and Hans. Um, now let's take a look here. Just how, how does Hans look here? He, I mean, just looking at the body language, he actually looks kind of serious here, by the way, in this picture. He does not look, um, he does not look super chill uh, he, the, the way that the Magnus definitely described him as being here. Like, he does not look super chill and disinterested. He actually looks kind of concentrated in the game. But, all right, let, let's keep going. <laughs> it looks like... Bzz, bzz, bzz. Good one, good one. Okay. Maxime Delugi is a chess grand... Ma oh, wasn't a critical moment? Ah, true. Wasn't a critical, critical moment. That's a good point. Magnus Carlsen is a chess grandmaster and a chess teacher. During his active playing career, he was considered one of the best blitz players in the world. Um, again, I, I would be quick to stress that, you know, and this is in no way... This is actually probably a compliment, but I would say that when you talk about Maxime Delugi and blitz chess... When they say best players in the world, I would actually compare him to Daniel Naroditsky, where Naroditsky, where, where Daniel is a very strong player, does really well online, um, and he can actually crush like 2,700 players, but against the absolute top players, generally, he struggles. And so Delugi is very, 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 very good, but he was not one of like one of the top like three or four, um, the way the way that they're trying to, the way that they try to make it sound. Yeah, I went to college. I mean, obviously, Daniel could have been a 2700 plus player if he hadn't gone to college but at the end of the day i don't think daniel is is that unhappy without how everything has turned out all right um outside the scene however very few know his name that though changed quickly following the cheating accusations leveled by world champion magnus carlson against his opponent hans neiman in an interview several weeks ago carlson implied that neiman's mentor maxime de Lugie, may have had something to do with the situation for weeks de Lugie, who lives in new york declined to speak to the media but he has now released a statement in a Skype interview with Der Spiegel, Delugi has now spoken for the first time publicly about the accusations. Der Spiegel, Mr. Delugi, let's start with the day it all began for you. On September 21st, Magnus Carlsen mentioned your name in an interview concerning allegations of cheating against Hans Niemann. He said that you had done a good job mentoring Niemann, a backhanded compliment. Delugi, I was sitting in the car when a friend sent it to me. I read it and thought, that's good. Then he called me and said, what do you mean that's good? I said, well, he just congratulated me on being a good mentor. Why isn't that good? He replied, what? Your name is being slandered and destroyed on Twitter. He explained to me that Magnus was claiming that there were parallels between Hans and his mentor. The latter was helping him cheat. I almost stopped. It was just crazy. When I got home, I looked at it and thought, oh my God, these guys are just crazy. I have nothing to do with this. Okay. Der Spiegel. Before we get into that, let's address the allegations which came out shortly after Carlson's comments that you had cheated on Chess.com in 2017 and 2020. Your account was suspended, though Chess.com didn't announce the suspension at the time. Now, though, your confidential email traffic from the time has been leaked to Vice. Okay. Delugi. I was playing an online tournament on my account in 2017. As I was playing, I was explaining to my students gathered around me how I decide what moves to make. I wanted them to see how a grandmaster evaluates, and they were able to suggest moves to me. My students are much weaker players, so it wouldn't help me improve. But we discussed their ideas. Oh my gosh, is he still on this? Oh my gosh, I, I, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. I, I really cannot believe this. I'm reading this exact same thing again for like the millionth time. Uh, it wouldn't help me improve. I, as I said before, in order for you to... You know, like. It, in order for me to play an entire game, like let's just say hypothetically, you know, I go to the local chess club and I have 10 kids watch me play Title Tuesday and they, they like give ideas. Um, it would take me all of probably three moves to realize that something is off. Maybe five if I'm being really generous and conservative. But after five moves, I would know for a fact that that like their moves are too good. I would know that. Um, I, I would know that. So <laughs> I can't believe that we still have this. Um, I just can't believe it. I just I can't believe he's still sticking to this. Um, five months after I was suspended, I found out why I had been suspended. Okay. Um, a student had been analyzing my game with an artificial intelligence program on his laptop or smartphone and suggesting the computer moves to me without me knowing where the suggestions had come from. They were, of course, good moves, so I often chose them. <laughs> Again, I, I, like, I, I, have to, I have to be real here. Like, if I went and played, and there are 10 students who are, like, they're just shouting out moves, after a couple moves, I would know, and it would not, um... I would not, I, I would know. I would know immediately. 
I, I, and Delugi, there's no way that Delugi would not realize this too, because he'd realize the moves are coming from a kid who's like 15 or 1600. Like, come on, Max, be serious. Like, seriously. Um, okay. Okay. After the suspension, I had to deal with being called a cheater. That hurt me emotionally. I immediately contacted chess.com when I found out what had happened. They said, okay, but this is still a violation of our fair play guidelines. Okay. He reminded me of Anatoly Karpov, whom I once coached. Dear Spiegel, later you were given a second chance and were able to play on the platform again. But in 2020, you were once again, in 2020, you were once again because, or you were once a banned, I guess, because chess.com accused you of cheating in the title Tuesday, a tournament with prize money. Okay. Delugi. While I was playing the last round of the tournament, I was banned. They told me I had 72 hours to confess, but I thought to myself, what kind of cheating? Look at the games. Where am I supposed to have cheated? There's not even a reason for me to cheat in Title Tuesday to win $500 or something. I charge more money for private chess lessons. Um, but if I hadn't confessed, my account would have been suspended forever, and everyone would have thought I was a cheater. I didn't want to go through that again. So I made a false confession, after which my account was unblocked. Chess.com told me everything was confidential. Only problem here is that... Um, 72 hours, he responded after a whopping seven minutes, you guys. Now, as, as, as I've said before, like, chess players, you know, we, we, we focus, we think so much. It's all about critical thinking, strategizing, you know, being patient, making the right decision at the end of the day. And um, it took Delugi all of seven hours to, uh, to confess. Or not seven hours, seven minutes. Seven minutes to confess. Um, so, as you see, clearly... Um, Seven minutes to admit cheating is insane if it isn't true, of course, because you would take you take probably 10 minutes just literally falling back in your chair thinking like, what the heck is happening? Like, how am I in this situation? Like, this is completely insane. Um, bad clock usage, yeah. So, I mean, you would at least take 10 minutes to like 30 minutes just being like, you, you fall back in your chair, you'd be like, what the, you'd be like, what the heck happened here? Like, it's be like, wait, what? Wait, what? Okay, and then, then you would start thinking it through, then you'd probably call a friend or two and you'd be like, this, this is, this is insane. Um... Yeah, it, you take, I mean, honestly, if like, if I saw some email like that, I probably, I'd read it. I'd be like, okay, wait, what? And then I'd be like, huh? And then I'd go reread it again, at least like two or three times, just to, just to make sure that I had read it correctly. Um, so yeah, seven minutes. Um, all right. Uh, where were we? Okay. Der Spiegel. Chess.com assured you that everything would remain private. Delugi. Yes, of course. They wrote on their website and a personal emails that everything would remain private. It would all remain between us. All confessions would be confidential. Okay, there's Spiegel. Was there no other solution? Couldn't you have gone through the games with chess.com and shown them they were human moves? The Lugie, we never got as far as thinking about such a solution. I don't even know that there was another one. Well, I mean, of course there was no other one because you confessed after seven minutes, dude. Um, like, <laughs> I mean, of course it did get to that point because he, he responded after seven minutes. Like, duh. I mean, seriously. Okay. My experience, my experience in 2017 made me realize that there's no way to prove Prove to chess.com you didn't cheat, even if you didn't cheat. When I was still active, I beat, I beat Gary Kasparov, the reigning world champion with black, in a must-win game in the World Blitz Chess Championship. I'm not afraid of playing against the best players in the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. Der Spiegel. How do you feel about cheating in online chess? Delugi. I agree that it is very unpleasant when someone cheats against you online while you're playing and trying to improve your rating. I understand the goal of chess.com is to prevent that. But they, they completely lose the measure of it. Online cheating is not like cheating at the board. Again, I 100% disagree with this. I think online cheating and prize money tournaments, exact same thing as cheating over the board. Just because it's harder to cheat over the board doesn't make somehow cheating online and prize money tournaments any less, any less, uh, less uh, consequential. Okay, there's Spiegel. You are a chess grandmaster, but mainly you are an active as a chess teacher. How did you get to know Hans Niemann? Delugi, Hans is a friend. I met him for the first time eight years ago when he was 11. I met his father at the U.S. team, uh, who was part with the U.S. team during the World Youth Chess Championship in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2014. We got to talking and I watched Hans. Der Spiegel, what was Hans like when you met him? He wasn't very respectful of people he, he competed against. He beat chess masters and talked garbage during games. But when we played against each other, I beat him in pretty much every game. So he had to stop being disrespectful to me. That's probably one of the reasons we got, get along well. After the tournament, his father came to me, asked for my number, and whether I wanted to teach Hans. Der Spiegel, how did the training go? Delugi, we talked to each other via Skype. He was in California, I was in New York. We built an opening system for him, and he played perfectly according to what I taught him. I thought, oh my god, this boy is absolutely brilliant. He reminded me of Anatoly Karpov, whom I once coached. When Hans was 11, he beat a Fede Master in a very complicated game. 
He played perfectly. I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing I'm going to say is, yeah, I, I, out of all the things that I can think about Hans, saying that saying that he reminds you of Anatoly Karpov is one of the most comical things I've ever heard. Um, one of the most comical things. But then the played perfectly, I had tears in my eyes. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, this is, uh, this is a little bit much. I, I can honestly tell you that in my entire career, probably, like when my stepfather has seen my games, he's probably never actually cried. Like my actual, my actual like uh, stepfather's probably never cried when I've won a game. So this is, uh, this is, um, yeah, this is phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Um, okay, let's let's keep going. Der Spiegel, but at some point he stopped improving. What happened? The problem is that there was significant upheaval in the family. Hans has three siblings. One parent lost their job. They had to move, and there was a lot of turmoil in the family. During that time, my teaching of him came to an end. But later, his mother called me and asked me if I could outline a plan for them for what Hans would have to do to become a Grand Master. That was a bit ridiculous. No, no, being proud is one thing, but come on, like, crying tears seriously. Um, okay. Um, that was... Uh, wait, his mom called and asked if I'd outline a plan for Hans um, would, would have to do become a Grand Master. That was a bit ridiculous because you could, re you could write entire books on the subject. Hans then basically hardly received any training. Der Spiegel, but he was still good at chess. Delugi. When he was 16, he was offered a scholarship to Columbia Grammar School, a high school in Manhattan, because he was such a good chess player. So he decided to move to Manhattan to a room near the school. At 16, he was on his own. He started giving chess lessons and went his own way. He was already a strong international master. It's an incredible story. Der Spiegel. You continued to... Um, follow his career i continue to follow his games i was interested in his career because for me he is the most entertaining talent in mainstream chess i'm sorry like again this is this is like the <laughs> i'm crying while i listen to this this guy like this guy I, I i'm just saying like most you've seen a lot of talented kids but there's something inexplicable about, about hans like i've literally spent my entire adult life in the chess world and i can tell you there have been a lot of junior players i've seen um who are who are incredible incredible um, and as I said, until recently with Hans, I have seen nothing that would make me suggest that he's like, he's the next coming of Karpov or like he's better than, I don't know, like Ray Robson, for example, or Samuel Sevian or many other players. So uh, this, this is just, this is just comical um, for me to read. Okay. Um, or Ali Reza or Jeffrey or any, any number of players, obviously. But there's something inexplicable about, about Hans, but we didn't train together. Uh, just playing blitz games some, sometimes. There's Spiegel. But you did teach him again. Later, Delugi, one day in 2021, he came to me, and by analyzing his games, I came to the conclusion that the weakest part of his games was the, the weakest part of his game was the end game. I still think that, by the way. Hmm. So I said to Hans, you had an absolutely unique feeling for the end game where you're 12 years old, but it's stagnated. You need to improve it. I showed him some really difficult end games. He understood, understood that he had to learn that. Okay. Um, let's keep going. Der Spiegel. It was just a training session. Yes. But I tried to put him in touch with good coaches. Eventually, he found an excellent coach who improved his game. But we stayed in touch, and he sometimes asked me for advice when it came to participating in tournaments or something. Again, this is the thing that I find very strange about the whole situation. Um, and I don't really know what's going on. But this whole, like, coach who improved his game. Like, why is it that Hans will not say who the coach is? Delugi won't say a name. And there's this air of mystery about the whole thing. Like, I don't... I, I find this whole thing very, very strange. Um, because there is no good reason to not say who the coach is. Unless it's someone ridiculous like a Kramnik or a Kasparov. So I, I'm, I really find the whole thing very, uh, very, very strange, to put it mildly, even now that nothing's being said. Um, so, uh, Parham? No, no, it won't be Parham. All right. Moving forward. Um, okay. I, and, and to give you an... I mean... Like, the, the reason it's so absurd is because everybody talks about who they work with. And you might, you know, when you have a whole team, you don't necessarily say. But trying to, like, keep this mystery like it's some, some big secret, there's no, there's no secret. There's nobody even worthwhile other than maybe, like, Kasparov or maybe a Kramnik type where it's, um, where, like, this is, uh, where it's even worth keeping the secret, frankly. Uh, probably because they don't want to ruin their reputation. Oh, okay, that's, a, that's actually a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, that, that is actually a fair point. So let's keep going. Um, Der Spiegel. In early September, Neiman surprisingly beat Carlson in an over-the-board game in St. Louis. The next day, Carlson left the tournament. He didn't say why, but actually everyone knew it had to be allegations of cheating. In his first interview after that incident, Carlson mentioned your name and said you were Neiman's mentor. How did that come about? Uh, Delugi. Two days before Magnus dropped my name in the interview, an old friend of mine had contacted me and asked about my relationship with Hans. I said I wasn't his coach, more like his mentor. 
Okay, now again, this is very funny because Delugi got very angry at Magnus for saying that, for, for Magnus said that Delugi was Hans's mentor. And here he says, I wasn't his coach, more like his mentor. So Magnus says, his me he said something like his mentor, Max Delugi, should be very proud. And literally Delugi says, I wasn't his coach, more like his mentor. So Magnus says that, and Delugi basically agrees with that, but somehow, but somehow Magnus is like the worst person in the world. Um... So I, I'm I'm so confused by this. Like he says he's your he 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 said you're his mentor, and then you say you are his mentor. Okay, good, good stuff. What's what's the big deal? Um, he asked what I thought of the cheating allegations. I said they were reprehensible, ridiculous, and slanderous. There is no evidence. There is not even a crime. I told my friend. Actually, there is. Well, I know in terms of Deluga, there's no crime. But the reason this became a big deal is because of the Hans stuff online. Um, okay. Oh, did Magnus say coach? I thought Magnus said mentor, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I thought Magnus said mentor. Anyway, um, I told my friend who knows Magnus Carlson to contact Team Magnus and tell them it's all absurd. So he contacted them, and I think he told them Max is Hans's mentor. Okay. Der Spiegel. And then Carlson suggested you might have something to do with Nima's cheating. Delugi, I think something happened in Magnus' head. Something very bad. Okay, the, 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 the short answer of Delugi making up this, making this ridiculous statement is it's not something happened in Magnus's head. It's that there were rumors for many, there were rumors for at least two years about Hans and, and over the board tournaments and all that stuff. And Magnus has heard about it and the game, game sort of push it, push it over the edge. Um, and that's the reality. It's not something random happened. Um, okay, Der Spiegel, did you know him personally? Delugi, yes. And I had the greatest respect for Magnus. We played a lot of Blitz Chess at the Sinkfield. Chess Club in St. Louis about six years ago. He was very surprised that I was basically equal. Basically his equal. <laughs> okay, I, I love how this this changes. Like now Delugi says he was he was Magnus's equal. Um, you know, when I when I was when I played Maxime in um in San Diego after the US Chess Championship, we played at the at, after the closing ceremony. I was like, I, I was probably like it was 2005, so it was probably like 26.30, 26.40, and I basically beat him really badly. I've spoken about this before. I beat him. We, he basically, we made some kind of wager or whatever, and he sent me a check for $250. Um, so I find it comical here that he's he, he's basically saying that Magnus thought that, that Delugi was his, was his equal. I mean, yeah, right. Good one. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I like the confidence. Yeah, it sounds like something Hans would say, actually. I mean, why, why is that not surprising? Um, that, that sounds exactly like something that, that Hans would say, <laughs> but yeah, Delugi, like, yeah, it's like, this is like, what, 15 years or something, maybe not 15 years, but this is like at least 10 years after I played him, I was nowhere near my peak, uh, and I beat him pretty, pretty, ha pretty handedly, and then he's, he's saying that he, he's playing, like, playing Magnus, like, 10 plus years later, and, and he's, like, scoring equal with, with, with Magnus, that's almost like me saying, you know, look, like, I played Magnus in this match in Moscow, and what was it, it was like, I don't know if it was 10 points, 9 points, whatever the final score is, but it's like me saying, yeah, you know, you know, I, I only lost by eight games, but, you know, we're, we're basically equal. And, and Magnus thought I was his equal. Um, that, that would be, like, a very apt comparison. So, uh, so yeah, that, that, that'd be the apt comparison. It's like, yeah, you know, I only lost Magnus by eight games, but, but obviously I'm his equal, right? Like, he thinks I'm his equal because he's playing me. You know, something, something like that. All right. Anyway, let's keep going with this. this uh, um, and then we played Tandem Chess with the Yasser, Sarawan, and Maxi, and Bashi Lagrav until 4.30 in the morning. I was so happy. I was so happy about this experience. The, the shock was all the greater that he now mentioned my name. I had nothing to do with Hans at the time. I only gave him advice now and then. And suddenly, I am dragged into this without Magnus thinking about what he's doing to me. Why is he doing this? All right. Der Spiegel, what do you think? Delugi, Max, Magnus was very upset that against Hans, his streak of 52 games without defeat was broken. Maybe he also has a personal problem with Hans. He often behaves obnox obnoxiously. That's the way... He is Hans is Hans. Of course, this is not the this is not the reason for it. But anyway, let's keep going with the article. Um, so you think it's just because Carlson doesn't like Neiman as a, and is a bad loser to Lugie. That's what I think. Magus lost a bounce. Of course, again, this is not the reality at all. As I said before, there were rumors for two plus years about Hans and online and over the board um, from other like strong, strong grandmasters. So again, like Delugi is saying this, but we all know that this is not the reality. Um, and I know that for a fact. Okay. Uh, Delugi, that's, that's what I think Magnus lost the balance. Have you had any contact with Neiman recently? Delugi, I spoke to him before the U.S. Championships, and before that, I gave him some information that he didn't have yet. For example, I told him that Magnus wanted to have him thrown out of the tournament after his defeat in St. Louis. Um, oh, so this is saying before the U.S. Championship. Okay. Um, without any evidence of cheating, just because he had a bad feeling, only because he thought his opponent had been too rela relaxed during the game. Now, this runs directly... Um, this is, is directly runs like counter to what he said before about why he thinks that Magnus, uh, uh, why Magnus, you know, did what he did. So th this is kind of, kind of silly, but let's keep going. Der Spiegel, in public, Neiman still seems confident. What was your impression when you spoke with him? 
Uh, Delugi, I just spoke to him during the tournament that Carlson had left. He said he just couldn't sleep. He said he couldn't concentrate during the games. I told him to focus. There's nothing else he can do. It's extremely hard for him. Okay. Um, there's Spiegel. How can he save his reputation? Delugi, I think the best way is to go to court. All the information has to be made public. A jury or judge has to decide what to do. What Magus did is absolutely ridiculous and very bad for chess. Now, the problem with this notion with Delugi trying to suggest that Hans should go to court is that at the end of the day, Hans basically admitted to this cheating. He cheated over the board there, you know, as the saying goes, quote unquote, very likely to have cheated in over 100 games. Additionally, one thing that gets overlooked is that in the actual chess.com report, chess.com highlights six tournaments over the board with statistics that appear to be suspicious and it's up to FIDE to decide what to do. But if you cheated in over 100 games online and then there also are six tournaments in the report where they're basically saying that it looks a little bit odd statistically, like, I'm sorry, but no jury is going to rule in your favor at the end of the day. I, I mean, there's no jury that is ever going to rule in your favor um, as I see it. Okay. Um, Delugi, are you afraid for your reputation? I'm not worried about my reputation. I feel comfortable in my skin. My students trust me. Many of my friends whom I haven't spoken to in years have come forward and said how disgusting they find these accusations. Well, that's not actually true because if Delugi was, uh, was, was, wasn't worried about his reputation, he wouldn't talk about you know the, this huge behemoth, this great chess empire that my stepfather has that I'm going to be taking over and I'm going to just you know put my foot down and put Delugi out of business. So Delugi is he's trying to make it sound, sound like he's, he, he, he's all good, but it's, it's not all good. Anyway, let's keep going. Dear Spiegel, will you file a lawsuit? Delugi, there will be lawsuits. If I had to bet, I would say that Hans will sue. Again, if Hans sues, I don't see any world where Hans is not going to, uh, where Hans is going to win with, with that, with the 72 page report and everything that's, that's in it. I just, I, I don't think so. Um, but he might, he might. Um, aren't you afraid they will put you in court? For what? For reporting on stuff? Please. I mean, good, good luck with that. Um, I've taken advice on that, of course. I'm keeping my options open. I'm ready to fight. In my professional career, I've fought some battles where, where no one gave me a chance. Um, and I still, I still won them. I'm ready to call a spade a spade a spade. I just can't take it anymore. So basically, Delugi, it sounds like he's saying he's going to sue chess.com. If, if you read this, um, I'm going to get sued for being too gleeful. Ooh, too gleeful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm an influencer. Like, I'm a media personality. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. I'm too gleeful. Um, I just can't take it anymore. So as I see this, Delugi probably is going to sue chess.com. And then we see what happens. I mean, that's what he's saying. So yeah, well, we'll see. It's going to be fun. So, all right, next up, uh, what else do we have? Um, uh, would you be willing to be an expert witness if this did go to court? Honestly, I think, you know, I think at the end of the day, if Hans were to like sue chess.com or, or FIDE or whomever, like I do think that basically all the top players would probably, probably end up being expert witnesses and have to give their opinion on the situation. I do think that's true. Um, I do believe that actually. So it would be kind of interesting because if that happened, you, you, you would hear what everybody truly thinks. Um, you know, every, everyone would basically, I think they would have to say what they truly think. And it would be, it would be very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, 20 GM witnesses at, at a trial of the century. That's probably what happens. You'd probably have me, you'd have Fabiano, you'd have Nepo, you'd have Levon, you'd probably have like, um, you'd, you'd have all that. And, and then I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, next up we have um, uh, Der Spiegel. Why did you decide to speak publicly now, three weeks after your name first came up in the conflict? Delugi, I had to weigh my options. I consulted with three law firms. Some are very expensive and powerful and extremely knowledgeable about this issue. One piece of advice was to make my position public. And my point of view is that Chess.com is acting like the judge, jury, and executioner. Chess.com accuses, Chess.com judges, Chess.com punishes, and brand marks potential cheaters. In what world is that fair? Now, we can dis debate this actual topic, but I'm going to be very blunt here. Delugi is, it's funny that he's like, you know, judge, jury, and executioner. Has this guy not heard about how social media companies work um, and what, what they're able to do? Like, regardless of whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, social media companies can do whatever they pretty, pretty well want to do, even if you're the president of the country. So... Uh, I find this very, um, very funny to read. Like, I mean, it's just very funny that he's like, man, like, it's not right in this world. But hey, like, you know, a president got banned from Twitter. Like, the friggin' active president, the most powerful person in the world got banned from Twitter. And you're, 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 you're like, I don't know. It's just very, very funny reading, reading this. Um, it's just very funny. It's like, yeah. Um, what do we have? There's Spiegel. 
Did you have any further contact with chess.com? Delugi, we had an email exchange in which I wrote that I am interested in a peaceful solution. I asked for a public statement in which they exonerated me, but I was put off. Well, of course you were put off because they're confident that you did something that is cheating. Why? I mean, like, seriously. I mean, like, this whole thing is, this is comical. Yeah, I want, I asked for a public statement. I'm, I, I don't, I don't even understand. What is the public statement here? You admitted to cheating seven minutes after they gave you 72 hours. You, you basically admitted to it in 2017. Like, I mean, what? Like, what? Dear Spiegel, and what are you demanding now? An apology from Magnus for dragging me into this, and an apology from Chess.com for publishing our confidential emails. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is like, wow. This is out there, out there, out there. But anyway, this is the last article we're